video. Today I'm going to show you some fun mixtures using very granulating watercolors inspired by Schmincke's recent collections of super granulating paints. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and I would love for you to subscribe. Enjoy! The point of this video is just to play around with paint and also show you that, you know, you can probably create something very, very similar from colors that are easier to find, that um, you can find them in most brands, because I looked at some of the Schmincke colors, and not to take away anything from Schmincke, the, they created a beautiful uh, range, and they definitely hopped on that a trendy wagon of super granulating watercolors, which I'm here for it. I love, love, love uh, the granulation. You can really explore this much, much better with creating your own color palette and color mixtures. So we're going to do that. I'm going to use my ceramic palette and you can find this in my shop. There are two variations. Uh, this one is slightly larger, but it has less wells. And I actually prefer this one because the wells here are slanted and uh, I really, really like that. But if you want a smaller version that has more um, wells in it, then there's also this one with 24 small wells, but just be um, aware that these are not slanted, they're just like regular um, rectangular wells. So I like them both, but this one is my favorite, and yeah, they are available in my shop. So let's talk a little bit about the pigments that I pulled out. As I said, I looked online, I have here a little uh, cheat sheet, uh, I looked at which colors are in the Schmincke colors. I didn't look at all of them because I don't like all of them. I don't, you know, feel the need to create the colors that I don't, uh, that I'm not drawn to. But uh, there are some really, really beautiful ones, like the Tundra Pink and the Galaxy Pink, if you see um, uh, a pattern here. <laughs> so I looked at the pigments, and in the pinks, they have... Potter's Pink, which is a classical color that's been around forever. If you're not familiar with it, it's a really beautiful, kind of somewhat muted, uh, granulating pink. And I'm going to swatch everything for you so you can see and decide for yourself, you know, which colors you might want to play around with or add to your collection. Now, Potter's Pink is actually a color that is... Um, yeah, it, it can sometimes be a bit drier. I have the Winsor & Newton one, and I'm not a huge fan of it. It is a bit too dry for my taste. Uh, I've tried years ago the Schmincke one. I should probably search for it. I probably have it somewhere. Uh, this is the Schmincke one. It's not the Potter's Pink, but I should probably look for it. And Schmincke's formulation, as usual, is perfect. Uh, but yeah, I don't have it on hand, or I can't find it, and... Uh, I don't purchase Schmincke anymore. So I have here the Winsor & Newton one, and I'm going to add that to the palette. And then they also have in one of the colors, which one was it? Galaxy Pink, they have Manganese Violet. So I actually have a really old Schmincke tube uh, in my stash, and this is PV16. Oh, Potter's Pink is PR233. Uh, in case you didn't know. And Potter's Pink, every brand makes it. It's like a super classical, been around forever color. Uh, nothing special, you just have to find a formulation you like. So Manganese Violet. Uh, they also have in a lot of their uh, mixtures um, PB29, which is French Ultramarine or Ultramarine. I have the Rembrandt one, which I love and use all the time and it also granulates beautifully. And then, what else? I, they used also PY43 for their Tundra Orange. So it doesn't mean the, the pigment sometimes can create different paints. So some of them will be more granulating, some of them less, but this is a nice version that I found. This is Gold Ochre from Rembrandt, so I'm going to add that. 
And now, oh, and I also found in my stash a color from Schminke, an old <laughs> half pan that I have. This is mahogany brown, and they also use it for their galaxy pink. So this is PBR33. Yeah, it's iron oxide, um, mahogany brown. The name depends also on the brand, but uh, so I have the Schminke version, so I'll use that. And then my own additions were a few very granulating colors from Daniel Smith, which makes, as we know, a ton of colors and a lot of super granulating ones. So the lunar colors are granulating. I picked uh, Lunar Earth and Lunar Red Rock. This is actually very similar to um, like Indian Red, so a bit, just a little bit more reddish version than a Potter's Pink. And these will also add granulation. And then these two, the Hematite Burnt Scarlet Genuine and Hematite Violet Genuine, the violet is my favorite. And they both have beautiful, um, like interesting color separation and granulation. So I'm going to add them also. And I think I will add, this is a super, super old tube that I have uh, from Dallar Rowney. And this was the beginning of my hunt for the perfect cobalt violet. This color is called cobalt magenta and I've mentioned it in the past. I don't, it's not like my ultimate one, but I think for mixing it would be really, really fun because this color is very kind of weak. It, it's basically only like granulation. So you'll see that. And I think I will add it. And I might also add, I have here already a, a well dedicated to cobalt teal, which is also a granulating color. And they have it in the glacier green, uh, is a mixture of PG50, which is cobalt teal and Potter's pink. Oh, and I wanna show you here, I have a little sample of the hematite violet genuine. Isn't this gorgeous? Ah, oh, so, so pretty. So I'm going to squeeze all of these into wells and maybe put this one here and then we can start playing with mixtures. So let's take a closer look and in case I didn't say that before, I just want to say this is by no means, um, you know, me trying to say you shouldn't buy any of the Schmincke colors, you should absolutely get whatever you like, but uh, I know a lot of you are not in Europe and Schmincke is very expensive or hard to get and I just think that, I mean, I hope that this video will help show you that if you pick up a few kind of key colors or colors with particular um, qualities or characteristics, you will probably be able to make very similar versions of the Schminke, you know, new range. And not only that, you will also have the ability to very easily kind of tweak them and make them exactly like the ones you love. So I created a few mixes, but the ones that were most intriguing to me, uh, kind of looking into the Schminke ones, were of course the pinks. So here is the two pigments that they used for the Tundra pink. And you can see that they used French Ultramarine, which probably almost every watercolor artist has one. Uh, I have the Rembrandt one, I really like it. It granulates beautifully, but you can also kind of enhance granulation with the Winsor & Newton granulation medium. I just put this in a dropper bottle. This is how it comes. And this is a bit uh, an unpredictable, like you, you really need to test it with every single color. Uh, I find that sometimes colors that don't granulate at all, 
usually don't really respond to it except for the core paints which always behave differently so i just recommend i do recommend this but just be aware that you have to kind of test it and see what it does to a particular paint in a particular brand uh, because results may vary uh, really really greatly and Potter's pink uh, I have here the pigment numbers listed uh, it has like some different variations between brands some are a little bit more muted some are a bit more pinkish so just find one you like but they all are granulating pigments and with some opacity well French ultramarine is transparent so that's a really good combo we have all that granulation some opacity some transparency and I think these combinations are gorgeous. And my favorites are actually those that are leaning more towards the pink. So you can really, really tweak them. And I think I may really have to now add Potter's Pink to my palette. I will probably order the Rembrandt version. I'm pretty sure they have one. So this is my Tundra Pink. And I think it's just beautiful. You can see this granulation. It's gorgeous. Um, mostly you see the Potter's Pink granulation, but of course the uh, French Ultramarine adds a little bit of that violet hue to it. And of course the more uh, Ultramarine violet you add, the bluer it gets. So this is where this becomes a personal preference kind of thing. Now Glacier Green was also, I didn't really, a lot of the shades I have to say are not kind of my personal favorites. There's a lot of like blues there and greens that don't really float my boat. But these were, the Glacier Green was made from two pigments that I have. So Potter's Pink and Cobalt, Turquoise or Teal. Every brand has a different name. Uh, Daniel Smith calls theirs Cobalt Teal Blue. The pigment you want to search for is PG50. And these are the... Um, um, mixtures. Uh, personally, I really, really love the texture. I think it's gorgeous. Uh, I probably like these kind of muted pinks. Uh, I think these are all beautiful, but I don't know if these are colors that I would use. Like, I'm not loving them at the moment, but I reserve the right to change my mind. And then another one that I wanted to try is the Tundra Orange. Now, they actually, Schminke uses three pigments to create this, but I just mixed um, what I had, this version that I had of the PY43, the pigment that they use. I have uh, a color from Rembrandt called Gold Ochre. Every pigment can be used to make very, very different colors, so you know, it doesn't mean that mine performs exactly like theirs. It could be variations in the hue, in the granulation, but I used what I had. And again, the Potter's Pink. And I really, really like the oranges that I got here. I think they're beautiful. And yeah, just gorgeous texture. I think this one has a little bit of granulation. Potter's Pink is a heavily granulating color. And yeah, these are beautiful. So you could add PBR7, which I can't remember. I think it's Burnt Umber or something like this. Um, but I actually really like these ones here that are just like, you know, on the pink side, but just a little bit warmer. I think those are beautiful. So really happy with the performance of Potter's Pink here. And yeah, I think I might have to add it to my palette. So another one I tried to create was the Galaxy Pink. And this one is made from PV16, which is manganese violet, which I actually have the Schmincke version. It's a really old tube that I bought. I didn't really use it because it's much bluer than I like, but as you can see, it has a really strong granulation, which works very well for this. And these are the mixtures that I got. Oh, the other color is mahogany brown, or at least that's the color I have from this pigment, which is PBR33. Um, I really like these ones here that are kind of, I guess, in the middle. So just like a little bit warm, muted versions of this. Uh, this is gorgeous and the texture is beautiful. And just to kind of play around, I pulled out this color that I have in my stash. This is the Dalla Rowney Cobalt Magenta. 
and I made a mistake here. It's not, it's not cobalt violet. This color, it's actually here, it looks uh, quite nice. Um, from previous exper experience, I was a bit disappointed with it because I felt it was weak and only showed granulation, but I don't know, maybe I didn't spend enough time reconstituting it because here it looks really, really nice. And these are the the mixtures I got with the same mahogany brown. So this is just like my personal preference. I prefer this kind of violet to this one. And you can see that the mixtures are also very textured, but a little bit warmer, uh, which is what I prefer. And I kind of like all of them. So really, really pretty. And then I'll just show you a few others that I was playing around using uh, these more like granulating pigments and this one here is an interesting mix this is lunar earth and cobalt teal and just look at this texture I mean though both of these are kind of heavily granulating paints and I think they make really really interesting uh, mixtures it's almost it's kind of neutral has a little bit of I would say a very muted green it's still not completely neutral I would say it's a semi-neutral but look at this texture so gorgeous I don't really like lunar earth on its own it's a bit too kind of orangey yellow for me uh, but it makes really beautiful um, mixtures so this is a classic um, mix for me <laughs> I've done it like many times this is lunar red rock it's kind of similar to Indian red this is the pigment which is used in every brand makes usually several neutral colors with this pigment PR 101 and French ultramarine and you can see that you get really really beautiful kind of bluish grays that have this gorgeous uh, granulation um, next this one I also thought was really great so again using this gold ochre that I have from Rembrandt with the manganese violet um, these are beautiful. I especially like this one and I use a little heart to mark my uh, preferred uh, versions but this one is also very very beautiful. Now I usually use in my paintings something like um, Naples yellow or Naples yellow reddish and I don't really use manganese violet. I use something like the cobalt violet or maybe I'll use now the cobalt mag magenta that I showed you. So I usually get kind of warmer mixes, which I personally prefer, but this is really, really lovely. Nothing I can say about this. Okay, so here I have another uh, ultramarine, French ultramarine mix with Hematite Burnt Scarlet Genuine. This is a Daniel Smith color that is super interesting. Um, I have a slightly, like, I prefer the hematite violet genuine I'm telling you these because these are expensive paints and I could probably live without this one and I don't use it as much as I use this one this is as you can see is slightly pinker and I just love it a lot more but this is how it mixes with French ultramarine it basically um, neutralizes it I think this I would consider this to be quite uh, a neutral gray maybe just a little bit of like a purple hue to it but very very beautiful lots of texture yeah so this is I think this would be a really great uh, neutral to have in your palette because it's so interesting and you know you can neutralize colors with it or just like have a great earth tone and the last one that I want to show you is this one, the Hematite Violet Genuine, another Daniel Smith color that is just gorgeous. It's so, so special and unique. You can see here in the lines that it has this separation and it kind of has this base color that is a kind of a warm, peachy pink. I really, really love this color and it's been now in my palette for um, probably over a month. Here, maybe you can get a better look at it so so pretty and this is how it mixes with cobalt teal um, yeah you can get really really interesting neutrals here and you have the teal granulation from here and then this almost black granulation from this color very very interesting 
mixes. I kind of just like them next to each other, not necessarily like really mixed. But yeah, I just wanted to show you some options and I hope this helps you feel, you know, inspired to try what you have or maybe if you can't get the Schmincke paints or, you know, for any reason, uh, experiment with other granulating colors that you have or pick up a few of these colors that I mentioned like Potter's Pink or the other granulating colors that will help you make your own versions. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in another video. Take care. Bye bye.